Welcome to Kid Missing TV. I'm your host, Angelina Wilson. Today we're going to talk about the case of Catherine Winters. Catherine was nine years old when she vanished from Newcastle, Indiana on March the 20th, 1913. Needless to say, there's no phone number in this case. There is, however, a website, whereiscatherinewinters.com. Link in description. Um, like I said, no contact for her case. But that's not a surprise. Um, this came from the website. <clears throat> 104 years after the fourth grader vanished, eyewitness news reporter Rick, uh, Rich Van Wyk, or Wick, W-Y-K, reveals a new clue that is deepening this Hoosier mystery. Um, people from Indiana are called Hoosiers. Um, local reporter Elvin Pitts thought he'd seen everything. After 40 years of digging for clues in old files and newspapers, he caught a break. He couldn't imagine. It was a message from a time when Newcastle was a bustling factory town. Automobiles shared streets with horses and wagons. Okay. Now, this is this is weird. I'm trying to figure out how to word it all. Um, they had a strange home. The dad in the home was described as a hard drinking dentist. I don't want a drunk working on my teeth. Um, the mom was described as unfaithful. There was a boarder in the home named William Cooper who was a one-armed railroad worker plus nine-year-old Catherine and little brother Frank. Um, the wife, Bird, was actually the children's stepmother and one theory says that maybe she walked in on the stepmother's affair with the whoops with the border, and um, she was killed. Um, everybody thinks the evil stepmother di did it, but I don't think she did," said author Colleen Stephan. Um, she spent years pouring over old newspapers and different things like that on the case. Um, <clears throat> just a block from the county courthouse was the last place she was seen. And again this author is quoted as saying, the longer this went on the more people were sort of flabbergasted that all these resources and Still, this effort couldn't make any progress. <clears throat> uh, theories abounded, of course. You know, once again, they went to the Band of Gypsies thing. Um, seems to be routine in the 19-teens. Um, or some distant relative kidnapped her for ransom? I thought that was a weird one. Um, One of the prosecutors said in the newspaper that he knew the winter's home life was not happy, Pitts said. Um, eventually, police, of course, focused on dad, stepmom, and the border. Um, You know, there were some questions. Um, why didn't police connect the dots? Why was all the evidence, court and police re records destroyed or lost? Well, because the case is so old, that's why. Um, who put 
the document in the historical society's files and when. Because apparently some of this stuff was learned in the historical society's files, which is interesting. Um, it was a this day in history thing. Um, let me, that's what I think it said. Yeah, this day in history recap of important historical facts, events that took place, and then it And it said, oh, this is interesting. This is what it said at the Historical Society. It said, and I'm, I'm going to quote directly from it, hidden in the home's basement, investigators found a child's sweater, a hair ribbon, and a blood-stained undershirt. The three were arrested. Then 14 months after Catherine vanished, Judge Edward Jackson called off the trial, citing not enough evidence. More than a century later, at the Henry County Historical Society, Pitts discovered a document he and Stephen had never seen. It was a copy of a handwritten document, ten pages long, unsigned and undated. The writer recounts a story told by Cooper's boss 40 years after Catherine's disappearance. And he said, and I quote, I've always believed that Catherine made it home that day. And something happened to her after she got home. But uh, the author, Stefan, believes Catherine was taken by a child predator. Newcastle newspapers reported two girls taken from the streets about the time Catherine vanished. So many unanswered questions. That is truly a fascinating case and I will link her website. Um, I think it's wonderful there's a website on this case given that this case is from 1913. Um, I apologize for the picture in the poster. It was the best I could do in a 1913 case. Um, again, I just find it completely fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me, and, and I hope you found it as fascinating as I did. Um, next time, we'll be talking about the case of Mary Edens, age three. This is also a fascinating case and a part of history, a sad part of history, as you will see. Please hit that subscribe button and the bell for all notifications. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. I can't believe we're up to 176 subscribers. I'm stunned every time I see a new one. Um, God bless you, and have a wonderful rest of your day.